Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today I'm going to paint the traffic light from the Marvel Crisis Protocol starter set. I'm going to begin with some airbrush work and I'm going to base coat the entire thing with Citadel the Fang. We're going to use the Fang here as a base coat for a sort of steel color. It's just a little more interesting than using a flat gray. It gives you a little more color punch on the table. Now I'm going to go ahead and start dry brushing the whole piece with Citadel and Rizian Gray to bring out the detail. Now the brush I'm using for dry brushing here is an e.l.f. Cosmetics blending brush. And you can get this from Michaels, Target, apparently some dollar stores in the U.S. carry them as well. And oddly enough, Old Navy carries them. They're between two and four bucks and you really can't go wrong with the value on this brush. So I'm just making sure that I get every single surface here. Some of them are eventually going to be something besides steel, but it's easier to just dry brush everything at this point and worry about that later because there might be some parts I decide to leave steel and some that I don't. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a base coat of Averland Sunset to a couple parts. That's going to be the lights up at the top as well as the walk don't walk signal casing. This is a pretty straightforward base coat, so I'm going to kind of just skip through this. I'm just slopping on color. You can see I'm being pretty vigorous with it and just making sure I smooth it out as I go so it doesn't like clump up anywhere. But it's really straightforward work. Now here working on the walk don't walk casing, I'm being a little bit more careful because there's some nearby detail that I want to keep in the you know dry brushed steel kind of color. So I'm slowing down just a little bit here. And the one thing is this color does need a second coat basically everywhere because it's just a little bit see-through. You get a little bit of the gray kind of peeking through. So just throwing two coats down everywhere. The last little spot I'm doing here is the casing on the button for the walk don't walk signal. Now I'm just doing a couple little touch-ups. You can see I got a little bit of yellow, you know, where I didn't really want it here. So I'm just coming back in with the fang, touching that up, and with a very small hit of dry brushing on a much smaller dry brush, I'm going to bring in just a little touch of Fenrisian Gray. Now next up I'm going to start actually working on the lights themselves, and I want the green light to be the lit light. So I'm going to be using a brighter green for that compared to the other two. So I'm going to be starting with some Vallejo Sick Green as the base coat for the green traffic light. Now remember traffic lights are always red at the top, yellow in the middle, green at the bottom, at least in North America. It may vary in some other countries, but this game does technically take place in New York, so that's the pattern you're probably looking for. For the walk don't walk sign itself, I'm going to be using Reaper Noir Black as the base coat. I like Noir Black because it's not quite a full black, it's got a little hint of gray in it. I like to call this old t-shirt black because it looks like a black t-shirt that's been through the wash 50 or 60 times and is really well loved. It's kind of got that feel to it. And it means that if you need to add a little bit of shading with some black ink, you've got a little bit of room in the spectrum for it. I'm also using Noir Black as the base coat for the caution and stop lights because I want them to be off. And we're going to add a little hint of color to those by using, you know, a darker red and a darker yellow in the highlights. But for the most part, I want these to start pretty dark. By having these two lights really contrasted against the green light as well, it gives much more of an impression that the green light is lit. Next up, I'm grabbing a little bit of Corax White, which is actually much more of a gray than a white, but it's a very bright gray. And I'm using this as the base coat for the actual signage on the post here. So that's going to be the little you know, direction arrow for the crosswalk. Now this is the really fun part. I'm going to use that same white to freehand in a little symbol of a person crossing the street. And of course we want this to basically be, you know, a very structured kind of stick man. So it's going to be a floating head and then the body in a sort of a bit of a striding walking pose. If you're new to freehanding, this is actually a really good piece to practice on because it's basically just a handful of straight lines. And because you're putting this, you know, bright white against a black, if you mess it up a little bit, if your lines aren't perfectly straight, you can play back and forth a lot. It's really easy to cover up the white with a little bit more of the noir black. So you've got a lot of, you know, ability to kind of correct yourself and build that confidence in your freehanding skill. Now down here, I'm going to basically do the opposite freehand. I'm going to add a black border just inset a little bit here by just painting four black lines and then rounding the corners out. And then we're going to have a little arrow as well as the tiny walking man again. 
I will say I've just found through experience that it's easier to paint the straight lines first and then kind of get the corner in as a separate little detail than trying to paint sort of like one continuous border. You may have a different experience. Everyone paints a little bit differently and has different, you know, strong strokes and weak strokes. I find doing straight little tiny lines is the easiest way for me to approach a detail like this though. So now I'm freehanding a small arrow onto the bottom of the signage here, and the arrow should be pointing in the same direction that the crosswalk light is facing. Because the arrow tells people on this side where to go, whereas the light tells people on the opposite side of the road that it's safe to cross. And here I'm freehanding in that same little, you know, walking person icon. This time, of course, it's the reverse. It's black over white as opposed to white over black. But the same skills apply here. You're, you know, painting the exact same little stick man. And Corex White is such a punchy, strong white that you can cover up a little bit of black if you need to. If you need to tighten those lines up, if you make some little mistakes. So don't be afraid to try and freehand this. So my stick man is done, but he's a little bit on the heavy side, the line works a little bit thick, and so I'm just coming in with a little bit of Corax White and just painting in small adjacent lines to help tighten up how big the black lines are. And this is a really good way to paint details that are smaller than what your brush is capable of creating by basically layering adjacent details kind of on top of each other. Really quick detail here, I'm just throwing a little bit of black on the crosswalk button itself, just making sure I get that nice little round circle done. Next up, I'm going to grab some Reaper Dungeon Slime, and I'm going to use this to brighten up that green light, and to make it look like it's got that sort of like optical feel to it, like it's a rounded, clear bit of glass. I'm keeping the highlight focused to the bottom of the light. And that also helps sell the idea that there's a little bit of source lighting in the scene, that that sort of visor over the light is casting a shadow to the top of it, and more light is grabbing into the bottom. Next up, I'm grabbing some Moro White, and I'm going to use this all over the place. This is one of my favorite whites to work with. In this case, I'm using it to just add a tiny little hit to the bottom of that lens, and one little offset shiny spot as well. Grabbing Corn Red, which is a nice deep red, and Mornfang Brown, which is effectively a deep orange. And I'm gonna use those for similar highlights on the stop and caution lights. Now I'm mixing just a tiny bit of white into the corn red and Mornfang Brown and just creating a second little tightly focused highlight at the bottom of each of the two lenses. Another little hit of Moro White is adding a highlight to the top of the button on the crosswalk. I may be getting a little carried away now. Next up is highlighting all the yellow aspects and I'll be using Flash Gets Yellow for that. Cygnus Yellow works really well for using P3. War Colors One Coat Yellow is another great choice. Basically any just really bright, punchy yellow will do the job here. We just want to, you know, get some general broad highlights on these areas because we don't want the yellow to be flat when we've got nice edge highlights on all the steel aspects. And, you know, we've put a lot of work into making the lights themselves have some shape. So we want to make sure we're just not neglecting the traffic lights. And now it's time for my favorite part, the comic style black inking. Now you could stop right now and you have a perfectly good traffic light. And there's no reason you need to do more than that. But I really wanted this piece to fit the theme of my Marvel Crisis Protocol pieces and the detail I had already done on their bases. And that is to make it look as hand drawn and illustrated as possible. And the easiest way to accomplish that is by adding black lines to the geometry. So you can see here, I've added you know a black crease in you know what is basically one of the deep 90 degree angles on the base here, and I'm pulling out little hatch marks as a form of shading, which makes the side panel appear much darker than the top. And I'm just going to continue working my way around the base, adding in those sharp 90 degree shadows. Basically, you know it's a nice dark hit where any two planes of the model basically meet at this point. 
So outlining the bottom of the post now against the kind of, you know, bulky standard on the bottom. And I'm adding a little bit of an outline around each of the four bolts that are holding the light down to the pavement. There's a couple small scratches kind of sculpted right into the base here, and I'm accenting those with small black lines. Just following along the little crease or the little dent and making it that much more evident. It's small details like this that actually really work to sell the comic style aesthetic because all your tiny little sort of scratchy, denty details, super, super technical terms I know, end up looking like they've been drawn onto the model and that's really what sells the look more than anything else I think. So at this point there's just a whole lot of lines to add breaking up the geometry. The light is basically made of a whole lot of just kind of stacked simple shapes. So a lot of what I'm going to do now is just working my way around the model, adding these black lines around all the distinct details. Especially there's all these different bands kind of wrapped around the pole holding things in place, and we just want a line above and below them. And then of course, the traffic light itself is going to be the majority of the work here. It's got the most kind of little, you know, intersecting details, and we want to break that apart so that it looks like an illustration. Now here there's kind of a tight area between the signpost and the crosswalk signal, and I'm going to just fill that in a little bit with black, create the idea of a shadow there. This also helps silhouette the crosswalk sign against the pole when viewed from certain angles. Now as I'm creating the black lines around the you know geometric details, if I see either a bit of a sculpted scratch or just an opportunity to freehand one into place, I'm going to take that opportunity right now too. So you'll see I just add a quick little dash here just to make this sign look like you know, someone's thrown a rock at it or something at some point. It's got a little bit of a ding on it. Now, with all those horizontal bands, it can be easy to forget the vertical surfaces too, but keep an eye out for those. There's a couple around this little box. I'm also going to line the interior of it. I honestly don't know what this detail is, but it's got edges. Might as well pick them out. Previously, I added a fill shadow to the side of the crosswalk sign, and we're just doing the same thing on the front here, pulling it out with a series of hatch lines that just make it have a little of a color transition. It sort of creates a gradient from black to yellow by only tapering off the black ink. So the traffic light here is where things get really tricky. There's a lot of small intersecting lines it's basically built out of a series of sort of like stacked boxes and some circles. And you can be forgiven for not wanting to outline all of it. Do as much as you're comfortable with. You can pick out the bigger details. You can just pick out sharp edges if you want instead. In this case, I'm kind of going full bore here and hitting almost every single intersection. So you'll see it does take me a little while to do this. So because it's actually pretty repetitive, there's three lights and they have the exact same structure. And of course, they're mirrored left to right. I'm just going to show you a subset of the line work here and you can fill in the blanks yourself. All right, with most of those lines done, there's a few areas now I want to fill with black. There's a tiny little sort of just circle in the top here. Don't know what it is, but it's a bit of a divot, a bit of an inset area, and it's really small, so just fill it in. Also doing these sort of side planes to this inset box shape on the back, just filling in with black line as opposed to trying to have a line on the inside and outside of that little edge. And here I'm picking out some rivets, which are basically the bane of Comic Style's existence, painting tiny little lines around tiny little round details is not a lot of fun. Now I'm using some black ink to just catch the inset edge of the crosswalk sign.
Next up, I'm going to be adding some shadows to a few areas. That's basically anything that faces down towards the base. So there's the underside of the pipe here, the underside of the crosswalk sign, the underside of the traffic light. You can kind of see what the common theme is there. Now with those shadows in place, I decided I also wanted to break up these big open surfaces a little bit more with just some extra scratches, dings, and dents. So I'm doing that with just a series of basically straight lines, little semicircles, things like that. Just the idea of there being like a dent or a little chip or whatever. Now I'm bringing some more of that hatch mark style shading up onto the side of this little, you know, platform. Just making it have a bit of a darker side to help it stand out from the top surface. And here I'm going along, there's a pretty sharp edge here where the, you know, the side of the base bevels up to kind of this upper surface. And I'm just accenting that sharp edge by drawing a line across it. Now the line doesn't have to go all the way across, but it gives us a good point to pull shadows out of. So you can see here I'm starting from that line and taking little, you know, diagonal lines down at about a 45 degree angle, scribbling them in. And that just gives us something to kind of base that shadow on. So there's a little 45 degree angle here in the corner. I'm just going to lightly pull some line work out of it and only carry it maybe about a third of the way across the base and give it a little bit of a taper. It makes the angle feel just a bit softer. Now I left this little clip in even though it's a bit repetitive because as you can see right here, yeah, my brush slips a little bit. So I was adding a straight line and the brush just meandered a little, gave me a bit of a black ink blob. I'm actually just going to leave that there and pull some little shadows out of it so it actually makes it look like it's intentional. So you'll see as I'm going here, I'm just actually pulling some thicker lines out of that. And it kind of gives the illusion that I did it on purpose. One thing I regularly talk about in comic style painting is to just leave your mistakes alone and fix them at the very end if you need to. But sometimes you can actually just incorporate them into your design. They can be, you know, an extra little scratch or ding, or they just end up fading away into some black ink you add later. So it's not always important to, you know, fix mistakes the second they happen. Now I wanted here to do something to sort of break up the just big open plane that is the side of the lamp post here. What I decided to do was basically an alternating series of shadows. So you can see the plane to the bottom of the camera here has a shadow at the bottom of it. So here I'm actually adding the shadow at the top. And now you can see I've come to the next side. It's got a shadow at the bottom again. So I'm kind of creating this idea of like sort of like a checkerboard or alternating light and dark sequences where one has a shadow at the bottom, one has it at the top. And doing this really helps sell the illusion that it's basically a drawn object because that's the kind of way you might treat shadows and highlights if you are trying to recreate a traffic light on paper. Now here I'm just taking that a little step further and I'm adding a black line adjacent to the edge. What this will do is also make the other side that much brighter by having that black shadow just sitting right beside it. And I'm just dropping a few other hatch mark based shadows underneath some other details. So these sort of, you know, these banded areas, just dropping a little bit of a shadow underneath them on the back side of the crosswalk sign, things like that. Just anywhere that seems like it should be a little bit more shaded. I'm just adding that sequence of diagonal lines to create the impression of a darker area. I'm also taking the opportunity to add some extra scratches and dings and just little blemishy kind of details to any big open surfaces I see. Now one of the staples of my approach to metals in comic style is the idea of a reflected shadow and I'm kind of catching that here on these what I assume are steel bands going around the lamp. I've also decided to add a big deep shadow to the bottom side of the guards here, especially for the top two lights that aren't on, but ultimately add it to the green as well, even though there probably should be some cast light there. I'm not trying to be photorealistic, so it doesn't really matter. We're trying to, you know, emulate a hand-drawn comic. So even though the green light should be casting some light, the dark area around it actually just makes the light feel brighter. It gives you something to contrast it against. And here I'm working a little bit of a shadow, a very, very light one, kind of towards the back side of the side of the surface here. And it just helps develop the idea of shape when you look at this from different angles. And because this is an inset surface, I'm working some shadows into it as well, just to give the very obvious impression that it is kind of inset and therefore doesn't receive as much light as the outer surfaces do. So 
So now I'm adding a little bit of a different sort of detail to the surfaces. This is what I consider a coffee stain, where it's kind of shaped like a puddle and it's just a little bit darker than the surrounding surface. These work really well to make a surface look like it's been worn and aged, and they're really quick and easy to add. Finally, I'm going to work up the yellows a little bit, make them a little bit brighter. I'm just coming with a second coat of Flash Gets Yellow here. And I'm just building up basically the corners and the sharp creases of both the traffic light and the crosswalk signal. And finally, with all the highlights done, I'm going to add two of those little coffee stain style shapes just to the top of the crosswalk light. And there it is, a fully comic style traffic light from Marvel Crisis Protocol, ready for your character to just pick up and hurl at their opponent. Thanks for watching, I hope you really enjoyed this one. Have yourselves a great day, and do something epic. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed that one, please hit like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos in the future. If you want to take your support even further, you can do that at patreon.com slash epic duck. Every little bit helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing, puts new models on the table so I can make interesting videos, and most importantly, puts a roof over my family's head and food on the table. You can also join me for live painting shows several times a week at twitch.tv slash epic duck studios. I'd love if you came by and watched the show sometime and followed the channel. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who supported my content over the years, both past and present. It's been an absolutely wild ride, and I couldn't do this without all the wonderful fans and flockers out there. The hobby community is just an amazing group of people, and you really make this worth doing. So let's just keep on doing this together, making more content, and just being fantastic together for years to come. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic.